In this video, I'd like to start stating the ZFC axioms. There are a few of them, so we won't get through all of them in this video, but I'd like to state at least the first two and then remark on them. So let's get started. The first one is called the empty set axiom. or the axiom of the empty set. This states formally that there exists a unique set A such that for all other sets X, we have that X is not an A. This is uh, how, you re how you'd remember this is the empty set exists. Exists and is unique. Um, one thing that this axiom does is it claims the existence of a set. So in other words, it makes the universe in which we're working not vacuous. Um, and that's always nice. And also, uh, well, okay, and, and another remark on this is, just to remark, when I use the symbols for all and there exists and there exists unique the universe I'm always quantifying over sets so there exists a unique A means there exists a unique set A and for all X all will always mean for all sets X that's just a comment on um, uh, I guess the logical uh, logical formalism. Um, okay. The second axiom is the extensionality axiom. The extensionality axiom gives a condition or a test in some sense under which two sets are equal to each other. The long way to write it out is like this. So formally, for all sets A and B, A is equal to B if and only if for all other sets X, X is in A if and only if X is in B. So this is, looks like a mouthful. What is it really saying? It's saying that um, a set is completely determined by its elements. Or in other words, two sets are equal precisely when they have the same elements. So there's another way to state this, and in order to do that, we have to give a, uh, a definition, and uh, many of you, or all of you, uh, most of you hopefully will be familiar with, this is a subset, so we say A is a subset of B, if and only if, so perhaps this was written poorly almost looks like less than or equal to looks like this if and only if for all sets x if x is in a and implies x is in b x is in b now given given this definition we can state 2 again by saying for all sets A and for all sets B, we have that A is equal to B if and only if um, A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. Because this also lets me remark on the symbol I've been using, 
namely there exists unique so what do I mean when I say unique um, given so when I say this, this is a remark so give when I say there exists a unique set a unique set X such that P of X holds where P of X is a property that depends on the variable X what I really mean this is going to be if and only if there exists an X such that P of X holds so let me write this further down there exists an X I'll maybe start or something there exists an X such that P of X holds and for all for all Y for all, let me just finish writing it okay so there exists a unique set X such that P of X holds if and only if there exists an X such that P of X holds and if anything else if any other set satisfies the property P then there e then Y is in fact equal to the set X okay so in the next video I'm going to talk about the axiom of pairing and the axiom of union.